everybody. We're just getting set up here. Um, Speedy, can you let me know if you hear me? Uh, just toss a uh, message in the chat box if you hear me, Speedy. Speedy's saying there's no audio right now. Anything, Speedy? Sorry, if anybody can actually hear me here, just toss uh, toss some text into the chat, and uh, then I'll know we're good to go. I haven't done a stream now in a couple months, so it's possible this is not set up right anymore. Um, so yeah, just if you guys can hear me, toss a message into the chat box. Are you getting anything, Speedy? It shows the mic is live. Anything, Speedy? Can hear you. Okay, excellent. Is the um, is the audio levels okay compared to the game audio? Cool. Um, okay, I'm just gonna let Speedy know that audio is coming through. Awesome. Perfect. Um, Okie doke. So. So we're about to get started here. Okay. Okay, everybody. So yeah, uh, let's get let's get this thing underway here. So I'm the uh, I'm the developer of Outbreak: The Nightmare Chronicles. Uh, this released on Xbox One yesterday night, pretty late. Um, and this has been out on Steam now for, uh, I think, I think about a month. It'll almost be a month to the day, uh, from the release of the Xbox version. So, um, if you've played any of my prior titles, you kind of know where we're headed with this whole, uh, whole thing here. Um, these games are meant to be a loving homage to classic survival horror. Um, so it shouldn't be any surprise that we keep heading even, uh, faster towards, uh, towards a lot of those original roots there, and this game is kind of no different. Um, the first game in the series was Outbreak, which was a top-down 2D survival horror game, which brought over a lot of elements that folks will remember from Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Um, that game was uh, multiplayer co-op on Steam. Uh, the Xbox version was single-player. Um, and um, a lot of the mechanics there were, were a lot of Resident Evil mechanics brought into the uh, 2D space. Um, and that game was basically just to give me a chance to get up to speed on, on game development in Unity, uh, work out a whole formula for how the game would work, net play, and everything like that. Um, from there, we went to Outbreak the New Nightmare, which was a 3D version of that game with fixed, well, they were fixed in panning camera angles. Um, but it was a significant graphical jump, uh, more characters to play as, still had the online co-op up to four players. Um, the version that came out on Xbox um, did only, was only single player. It was uh, sold at a r uh, reduced uh, price compared to the Steam version on there. Um, and the Xbox version was was a 
little a little rough in some ways. The uh, I had to tone down the graphics significantly to get performance up. It played much better on Xbox One X consoles, um, but it was still it was still very playable, and I, I got a lot of positive feedback from it. Um, and this latest title then is really a, a refinement of that formula, and a definitely a refinement from a technology perspective. It's um, the frame rate is way higher in this game. The loading times are greatly reduced. Um, and you'll find that it's got several mechanics that are more akin to classic Resident Evil and Silent Hill games. Um, things like having instanced rooms, restricted save systems, um, um, inventory management through shared item boxes, uh, things like that. Um, so that's kind of where we're headed here, and this is just going to kind of be a launch day stream. Kind of going through a little bit about the game, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the mechanics and everything here. Um, the response on the internet so far has been great, though. It's been it's been awesome to see Twitter lighting up with this thing. Um, we got we got a lot of support from ID at Xbox with um, sharing the title, um, and um, you know, and one of the nice things about this title is that it's Xbox One X enhanced. If you have a 4K TV and an Xbox One X, it uh, displays at native 4K the entire time. The resolution isn't dynamic or anything. Um, with that, even with the better hardware, the frame rate did go down a little bit on the Xbox One X version. If you're playing on a base model console, your frame rate is going to be very smooth. If you're on an Xbox One X, you'll you'll notice a little bit of a hit there. It's it's nothing nothing too uh, significant, but it it definitely we we traded quality for uh, performance in that case. Um, and I'll note that given that there's only four viewers in the chat right now, this exposition is more for folks who are going to watch this video on demand. Um, I found that when I release games, it, it pays to do a live stream and kind of talk through the game, and then usually a lot of folks come in the in the weeks afterwards to kind of watch it and, and listen to it. So that's that's why I'm kind of going through the whole story here, even though we don't have a, a lot of folks in the room right now. So yeah, so let's uh, let's dig into this and kind of get started, and we'll, we'll start kind of talking through the different aspects of it. So the first thing here outbreak. is the familiar outbreak sound. Um, you load it up. And as with the previous games, it kind of launches into a little bit of story exposition here. Uh, this game chronologically takes place after Outbreak the New Nightmare. This game stars, stars Lydia, who was a character from that game. Um, but time-wise, the game picks up after they've kind of escaped the bunker that they, that they set off the self-destruct system on. Um, and if you've played through the end of the new Nightmare, spoiler alert, um, they basically come out of the bunker, and a lot of what they were trying to do there was really for naught. Um, Speedy, you're saying audio just cut. Um, Tarsal, can you confirm if audio is still going or not? Okay, this is it's Speedy, it's got to be something on your end. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, um, right, at the end of the new Nightmare, they kind of emerged from the bunker. They, they blew it up. It, it was one of the sources of the outbreak, but the problem was is that the outbreak had already spread across the countryside, and when you started that game, you were in the city and inside one of the shipping, uh, a large shipping building. So blowing that up really didn't do you too much good for, for stopping the, the zombie apocalypse, unfortunately. Um, so after they come out of the bunker, you know, they're basically facing down a horde because it made a lot of noise uh, from the explosions and everything. And they're just running for their lives at that point. They hit a cliff, there's no way, there's nowhere else to go, and they all jump off the cliff. And that's how that game ends. And this game picks up, ta you know, with a focus on Lydia and what happens to her after taking that fateful leap off the cliff. Um, so a lot of what happens here at the beginning of the game is it just kind of retells a lot of the story from the previous title here. Um, it shows that they jumped off into a major riverway at that point. And when Lydia kind of regains consciousness, she finds herself being hunted out in the forest, starts running for her life, comes across this abandoned manor, and a lot of how this game starts is that she's alone in this manor and trying to find a way to survive. Um, but if you look at the end of the story screen, she kind of already knows her fate is sealed through this. Now, I'm not going to say that she's absolutely going to die in this game, but I think you'll agree it's not looking too good for her as the game starts off. Um, and then we've got our typical little note from the developer, you know, where I, I make a, a, a plea for the continued support of survival horror. Um, uh, this game features the two classic control schemes from the new Nightmare. You've got modern and classic tank uh, controls. Modern is basically you move where the direction that you push. Classic tank is Resident Evil tank controls, essentially. Um, with all the little flourishes, with the quick turn and everything else that was kind of introduced later on in the series. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the tank control, so we're going to be doing that. Um, 
And yeah, they're pretty much, they, they've had some improvements. And I'll talk, when we get to the start of the game, I'll start talking about how the camera system's changed. But um, they've been refined significantly. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Tarsal. Tarsal says, I like how much work you guys put into this. That's why I've stuck around for so long. So I, I have to say, I wish there was guys working on this. It's literally just me. I'm a, I'm a solo indie developer. I work on this in my free time. Uh, which is why it takes me a while to produce content like this, and why when we talk about the other chapters, they're, they're going to be a little while till they're delivered. Um, but this is in many ways a one-man show. I've got Mr. R. Speedy in the uh, chat right now. He's kind of my community moderator. He, he's been very helpful in kind of managing things on our, on our Discord, and he moderates all of our um, uh, gameplay streams as well. Um, but outside of that, it's, it's pretty much a solo show. Uh, with me doing all the development and uh, marketing and you know porting and everything, so uh, I'm glad. I'm always glad to hear when people enjoy it. It's very exciting. So we're gonna pick our controls and save. Um, you'll notice the uh, uh, main menu is very simplified compared to the new Nightmare. Now, um, uh, story retells that intro story. Credits is the credits. Uh, you can go back if you want to switch out profiles. And the option menu is is also really streamlined as well. There's there's not a whole lot here you can do except you know. Uh, basically dead zone on the thumbstick or, the, or delay on a d-pad. You've got your vibration toggle, brightness, and uh, audio volume ambiance. So uh, Siren Bob just hopped in with a question and he's asking uh, why this is not available in Germany. And the answer for that is that I need to get a PEGI rating to release in Germany or in um, UK and in Europe and, and all those other areas. And Unfortunately, those ratings are expensive, um, and I, I'm a solo dev without a budget. So um, the the ESRB rating is free, um, which is why the game's available in North America. Um, but unfortunately, I haven't uh, been able to get things together to get ratings in other other areas and release uh, in those locations. It could happen down the road, um, and I've certainly received a lot of feedback asking me to do that. Um, so it's definitely something I'll stay, that will stay on the table. If the games end up selling extremely well, it'll be an opportunity for me there. Um, but as of right now, this is North America only. So welcome, si Siren Bob. We'll, we'll, we'll go on this adventure together. So yeah, the other things you can do here is you can change your control scheme. Over here, it's the two options. And you can view the control um, layout here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. If you've played a Resident Evil game or a Silent Hill game, it's right here. Uh, <laughs> Siren Bob, it's it is a uh, rather uh, rather an expensive proposal if you want to donate towards that. But feel free to hit me up on the Discord if that's something that you're very passionate about and you want to donate towards that. It's maybe something we could set up, or uh, maybe it's something that you know if you wanted to run with, you're you're more than welcome to. If I can get the funds together, I'll, I'll spend the time and get the rating, uh, essentially. Uh, so yeah, so we're looking at the controls here. Um, nothing was really removed from the new Nightmare. Um, I, don't, I don't really think that any controls really got stri stripped out from this. Um, <laughs> thanks, Tarsal. Um, you guys should hit me up on the Discord. The, um, the Discord address is... Um, uh, it's on our Steam forums. If you go to the Steam discussion forums for any of the Outbreak games, there's a sticky topic there. Uh, Mr. R. Speedy, if you have the link handy to the Discord, feel free to toss that in the chat too. Um, if not, I can try to I can try to find it after the stream and uh, toss it in after the stream's over. Uh, but talking about the controls here. Um, I think it's pretty much identical to the new Nightmare. I feel like I removed one, but oh, the, oh, the map got removed. There's, there's no there's no overhead map in this game. And I'll talk a little bit about why the map was removed um, when we start playing. Uh, thanks, Speedy, for tossing the Discord link in the, into the Mixer chat. Everybody, feel free to click on that and join us on there. We're, we're usually chatting about development and showing off stuff that's coming down the pipe there. Okay, so we've, we've now spent 15 minutes talking about the menu system. Uh, which is exciting. So let's spend another five minutes talking about the menu system. So uh, Outbreak the Nightmare Chronicles is an episodic game. Um, what is released now on Xbox and Steam is essentially Chapter 1, uh, which um, has the story mode content and the first battle mode content. And you will see in the next patch, whenever that comes out for this, that this screen is going to change to more correctly reference the... Um, upcoming content and what will be available for uh, uh, for it. Uh, Speedy's saying that this looks different from Steam. I think the Steam version was updated with this screen very recently. 
And in my current build, where I'm working on Chapter 2 content, this thing has changed significantly again, so don't get too uh, accustomed to this screen. Start Chapter 1 starts the story mode. Battle mode is basically the Chapter 1 battle content right now, and continue game if you have a saved game uh, lets you load it. Uh, the story mode is very reminiscent of Resident Evil campaigns in Silent Hill. You're going to solve puzzles, fight the undead, it's going to be a great time. Battle mode is an extra game where you fight through each room with very limited supplies and try to clear out the enemies. Uh, with a couple branching paths, actually, in it that, you, that are optional for you to take or not to take. Um, if you've played, like, the Resident Evil Mercenaries mode in, like, Resident Evil 3, this mode will be very familiar. So, um, the difficulties carry over from Outbreak the New Nightmare as well, uh, including the Nightmare difficulty, which is just an absolute nightmare. We're going to play on um, uh, normal, just so I don't look too bad. Uh, normal, there's plenty of ammo, there's plenty of enemies. You're, you're not going to run out of supplies on um, normal, um, most likely, unless you're just wasting ammo. But on hard, things get pretty strict pretty fast, and the enemies hit a bit harder. Um, and Biohazard and Nightmare um, are basically identical from a difficulty perspective, except Nightmare is a one-hit kill on you. Where Biohazard, you can take like two or three hits tops. Um, so basically, Biohazard is there if you want that nightmare difficulty without the one hit kill. We're going to play on normal though, because I don't want to look bad playing my own game. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's, let's dive in here to uh, the story mode. And maybe we'll do multiple streams until we beat the game here. This, this should be interesting. Um, this chapter takes will take you probably an hour to two hours, two and a half hours, somewhere in, in that range. I've been watching some streamers play it. Most of them are clocking in at about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, I kind of know exactly where to go and what to do, though, so it's going to go a bit faster for me, because I don't actually have to figure out any of the puzzles. When you start the game, um, basically we you jump in here and there's a little bit more exposition. This basically just talks you through Lydia arriving in the manor and uh, the initial room that you kind of start out in. Um, and yeah, I mean, the bottom line is she's alone in a scary mansion. She doesn't know where she is or, or what, why this manor is here. But I think it's safe to say that there's a reason why uh, it's included in the game and that you're going to find some links back to the new nightmare here. And it's worth noting that the new nightmare, the, the uh, uh, Nightmare Chronicles and the original Outbreak, they take place in the same universe. Although the new Nightmare and Nightmare Chronicles are kind of more directly linked. The original Outbreak took place in the same general surrounding area, um, but the survivors were different. You, you, you don't ever revisit the hospital from the first game uh, yet, anyway. Who knows if we'll go back. Um, but this is just a direct continuation from the previous title. Um, and the first thing we're going to notice here, and that hopefully you've been noticing as I've been kind of playing here, is that the load times are tremendously reduced. Um, in the new Nightmare, um, there was, I mean, it was probably 30 to 40 seconds to load a scenario. And the scenarios were massive. They weren't split up into different rooms or anything. Um, but in this, I really took a, a hatchet to the load times um, and got them down. You'll, you'll, you'll find that maybe the spinner stops for two seconds tops now, and room load time should be around five to six seconds. Uh, the game caches too, so if you go through the same areas a lot, it's going to start caching it and it'll, it'll load very quickly. So um, so yeah, the first room here. First thing we'll notice playing the game here is, is that the camera is not following Lydia. Um, in the new Nightmare, it was very... Uh, it, the camera always followed your character, and I got a lot of feedback saying that folks did not like that. Um, it made them... Uh, it either made them feel a little nauseous, it made the controls harder to manage, um, and what you'll see here is that Rooms just have fixed camera angles, and this is gonna this is gonna continue for the remainder of the chapters too. We're not gonna go back to panning angles. Maybe there will be one or two if the room really makes sense to have them. Um, but I'm working really hard to make sure they're all fixed camera angles here. Um, ironically, this room has probably one of the worst divide splits for the camera angles, though, because it's in an area where you're gonna want to go to to get the handgun. So we'll we'll go and pick up some of these initial items here. Um, the first big change you're going to notice, too, outside of the camera is that we now have an item box. Um, and this is very similar to the Resident Evil item box in a lot of ways. Um, it's, it's heavily, heavily inspired by that item box. And essentially, you have more or less an unlimited inventory. You, you can't fill this thing up if you tried, because uh, I tried. Um, and uh, um, you can place your items here um, directly in the box. You can store stuff out. 
On the easier difficulties, there's some freebies included in the box here to help you out. You get a knife, painkillers, and a floppy disk. As you ratchet up the difficulty, the freebies in the box, uh, I think, eventually disappear. Um, so what I like to do is kind of start off with just a handgun. We're not, we're not going to take the knife because there's going to be enough ammo to keep going as long as we don't uh, uh, make a mistake here. Um, and you'll find, you also notice that Lydia's outfit is um, identical to the new Nightmare as well. Nothing's really changed there. Um, but the second big thing you'll notice as I'm walking around here is outside of the frame rate being fantastic, uh, the dynamic shadows are on. Um, the new Nightmare on Xbox did not have any of the shadows on to help save a couple frames per second, but with how I've reworked everything, they are on and they are pretty high quality shadows now. So it's a, it's a pretty big excitement, uh, a pretty big exciting feature. Um, there's still the logs strewn around. They usually have puzzles in them. This one has a locked door that you need that key code to go through. So we're going to equip my pistol and we're going to bravely start the adventure. And I, I get an achievement right off the bat there for solving a puzzle. Clever girl. And I solved a puzzle. So I'm very happy with myself. Um, the next room kind of continues the tutorial theme of that first room. There's a single enemy in here, down that away. Um, and this is the first exposure you have to the save system. Um, you know, you need fly. Um, you basically have to find and pick up floppy disks to save your game. Um, you have to use one to save, and once you use it, it's consumed and it goes away. So you're very limited in how many times you can save. There's maybe, maybe ten floppy disks in chapter one, so you don't you don't have a ton of room. Um, but there's enough that if you want to save a little frequently, you can still do it. Um, and the first puzzle hint is kind of back here too. You'll see some some story exposition right there. Um, and this one I'll talk about here is that I tried to make the puzzles a little more uh, involving here. This one kind of follows the thing where it tells you that A is one, B is four, C is two, D is five, um, and you have to kind of complete the. Pu uh, find another clue, and then kind of complete the pattern yourself. Oh, I thank you. Yeah, I think this area looks pretty good, too. I, I was always a fan of this this first angle here, and if you... Um, the Xbox One boot screen is actually a screenshot of this area very, very early on in development without Lydia in it, um, but kind of blurred out, because I really liked how it looked with the, uh, with the light up there and everything. And Lydia's still got her trusty flashlight, um, which is pretty cool. Um, when she aims, the flashlight comes up. The flashlight is more to help you aim... Um, in general, less for lighting up areas. You do still have the chest light that you can toggle on if you want to. And what's very cool is that in my current development branch for, that I'm working on Chapter 2, I've added volumetric lighting um, to anything that's kind of like a cone beam, like your flashlight or your chest light. So it's pretty cool, and that, that's going to be more of a gameplay element in the second chapter, um, because the second chapter's going pretty much full Silent Hill, atmosphere-wise. It's going to get dark, it's going to get spooky, and the volumetric light coming out of your flashlight and everything and your, your uh, chest light is going to look, it looks really cool. So I'll be, sh I'll be showing off some screenshots from that probably in the next couple of weeks because it's, it's coming along very nicely. Um, but I don't know when it would get released. It's going to be months at least because I can only work on it a little bit every week. Um, and you can still toggle your flashlight off too if you want to. That's more for screenshots, I guess. Um, so we've got our first enemy here. He's pretty spooky. He's a threat. A um, few changes to combat in this game over the new Nightmare. I, I also love that I'm in the second room of the game and the stream's 25 minutes in. So yeah, we're going to be doing like five hours of streaming by the time I'm done with this. Um, combat's changed. The enemies have more health. Your, your damage is a little bit lower. Uh, Lydia takes can take less of a hit, too, compared to the first game. I had the... Um, in the new Nightmare, um, given the frame rate and the fact that it was a little harder to control, I really was lenient with your health. Um, given that we've resolved a lot of those issues here, you can't take, you know, 15 hits before going down. Lydia's, Lydia's can pr maybe take half as much damage as she could before, and these guys take quite a bit more. Um, but as long as you can keep a hail of gunfire going their way, you can pretty much push them off. And I've got my second achievement here, Pure Skill. That's going to be uh, landed a critical hit. The second puzzle hints over here in the blood. It, it basically tells you the uh, letter code that you got to decipher. i got another achievement, Surviving the Nightmare. I defeated my first threat. Congratulations to me. 
And when you combine those two hints, you can find the code for this door here. Uh, unfortunately, I already know the code, though. Which is 151324. So naturally, I put a 5 there. I really had a lot of fun with these rooms. Um, you'll notice that there's... You encounter a lot of small rooms with different configurations of furniture and things like that. Um, it got it got really fun with the fixed camera angles to find a good place to put them here to, to get the atmosphere. Um, I like I love the table being that, that far jutting out. Uh, and we've got our first key here. Uh, thanks, Count Eisen. Yeah, this, this game's a massive jump forward in terms of resolution, quality, frame rate gameplay. Um, if you enjoy the new Nightmare, you'll really enjoy this, because it's it's just a way more polished uh, experience. Um, and yeah, and, I, and I'm happy to hear that, because this has been a learning experience. I'm, I'm a solo indie dev. I, this is a hobby. I, I'm self-taught on everything here. And um, over time, things have just continually improved, and I've found better ways to, to build the game. And uh, um, having this game be Xbox One enhanced in 4K and still having it run great, is, is wonderful. I'm, I'm very happy we were able to do that. A little bit of ammo over here. Uh, this log over here is basically just story related. There's no puzzle there. Um, tells the story of what's happening here. Um, Lydia will slowly begin to realize that this is not just some abandoned manor, and instead it's um, linked to the, the clinical experiments that kind of led to the outbreak. Uh, Count Eisen asks, how many episodes do you plan on making? This game is planned to have four episodes total. The first episode was released with this with this initial release, and in 2018 and 2019, I'll release the remaining episodes. Um, each episode will have the story mode content, and then it will also have battle mode content for it as well. So you'll, you'll keep getting more content for the extra mode. And um, all of those releases will be paid DLC. Um, the I, I released this title very inexpensively because the remaining chapters will be paid, and I, I'm eventually aiming for the full game price to be around fifteen, twenty dollars when it's all done. So we got our key, uh, and you'll you'll recognize this key as a returning favorite from a previous game. Um, it's the round angled key. Um, so we're gonna go and be able to unlock that door earlier in the hallway. We got some ammo too. All right, and a new threat. So this is something else that I, I kind of took as an homage to previous survival horror games. As you progress and backtrack, uh, you'll be you'll be hit with new threats. Things may show up, new enemies may appear. Um, just because you clear an area doesn't mean it's always going to be safe in the future. But the key thing is is that this game does not have unlimited spawning enemies. Um, that was that was necessary for the co-op game to kind of keep the pressure on. Um, to force you to keep kind of moving forward and keep your resources coming down. In this game, the resources are fixed, the enemies are fixed, but you'll find that a few more friends show up as you kind of go through the game. There really was no reason to fight this enemy either. This is a, this is a tremendous waste of ammo. I could have ran past it. Which is another feature. You know, you don't have to fight everything in the game. You can run. Uh, you tend to trade your uh, health, though, for running away. Let's, let's take the disc. Another fun angle here. I, I This is another one of my favorite angles. You can get pretty close to the character model, too. And Lydia's got these little expositions that she says as, as the game goes through. They're mostly to guide the player, but she basically points out, you're going to need some ammo. Um, the Lydia model is the same from the new Nightmare. She obviously, falling into a river does not give her a chance to change her clothing, so she's still rocking the same outfit. Um, the model the model actually looks pretty good, pretty good detail, honestly. I'm 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 pl I'm pleased with the models. Um, the animations still have room for improvement, but um, it's it's a step in the right direction. I'm really loading up on too many items. This is inspectable, yeah. The faint glow provides a hint of comfort. I should have made an Undertale reference there. What a wasted opportunity. You can see, though, the um, the dynamic shadows and stuff look great, and the self-shadowing look great in this hallway as she passes underneath the light above her. Um, I'm very happy to have the shadows on and that they're at a pretty good quality level. This guy right here, he's got quite a bit of health. So let's get him. 
He glitches out a bit too. It's because of the hallway there, the nav mesh gets messed up. I gotta fix that. He's not he's not gonna be a threat to too many people in the game. I'll also keep pointing out bugs as we're playing, just because why not? This guy here. Get some distance. I'm a critical hit machine on this guy. Right. Oh, we got two threats in here. This is another room that I liked with the camera angles and the lighting and everything. There's a lamp on the on the far side of the room that sets a really nice shadow. Um I think I think there's handgun rounds and shotgun shells in here. We're we're just gonna kill these guys. Got a critical hit on this dude, he's gonna go down fast. Hey, and the Banjo Matic has joined us. Welcome to the fun. We're doing our launch day developer stream. Kind of showing off the game. You missed uh, hours of exposition leading into us actually playing the game. Um, this room's got some shotgun shells. We don't have a shotgun yet, though. Uh, we got the handgun bullets, too. Little inspectables here, too. So you can see the shadows work pretty well in this room. So just a reminder for anybody just joining us, this is we're, we're on normal mode, so we're not going to die. And there's plenty of ammo. Um, although my inventory is very full right now. It's alarmingly full. Let's go back and hit the item box. You'll, you'll find that you have plenty of supplies in normal mode as well. It's it's really uh, forgiving. We're gonna we're gonna leave the knife in the box. Maybe we should have played this on hard mode. We'll have to do like a harder biohazard mode stream. Maybe we'll restart in the next uh, live stream. Um, there's a, there's gonna be some backtracking in this game, too. You'll see this door here. I kind of avoided it, but I shouldn't have. Um, you'll find doors if you need keys or, uh, other items to open up. That one needs tools to break it open. Because it's pretty jammed. Um, and yes, the question was, is this running on Xbox One X? And the answer is yes. This is, I'm playing this on, at 4K on Xbox One X. It's, uh, it's enhanced, uh, with 4K on there. You'll find that on a base model console, you're going to get a slightly higher frame rate because it's running at 1080p on the Xbox One and Xbox One S. Um, but this one, it's 4K. Um, and given that there's no anti-aliasing in this game, um, the resolution really helps. You can you can see it's it's actually pretty clean, even just on the character model. Got our lamp here. You can look at the lamp. Hey, this room's crazy. So, you're gonna just open fire. There's no way to get out of here without taking some damage. I think there's, yeah, there's handgun rounds here. I actually, um, when the Steam version came out at the beginning of April, um, the difficulty on normal was even easier than this. I went through and reduced the ammo significantly. And even still, you can see I'm still rocking well over 30 rounds here. Um, we're getting into some cool areas here. This is more of the larger area of the mansion. I really, really like this room with the lighting and um, the fog and everything here. Um, so let's just take these guys out. The first few encounters in the game, too, they're really designed that you you have the advantage. Um, you kind of have to go out of your way here to, to let these guys get the jump on you because they're usually fixed in position. Um, and you're pretty well armed. Um, things get a little more crazy as you progress. The enemies start seeking you out on their own. Um, you have less time to think. Especially on hard mode where there's less ammo and everything, you have to start dodging some of the enemies. Uh, but for now, we've got the advantage. They, they also get a little bit faster in the later rooms. You see that guy made pretty good, uh, he, he made some pretty good gains on me there. Let's keep picking up shotgun shells. We're gonna, we're gonna get that soon. I think there's, uh, 
Oh, there's Epicac here. There's not a ton of poison enemies in this chapter. Uh, there's a few strewn around. But honestly, there's probably more Epicac than there is poisoned enemies here. Um, these rooms, too, you're going to start finding a lot more locked doors. Um, the key codes are in a lot of these manuals here. Um, again, I know all the codes, so we're kind of sidestepping a, a tremendous amount of puzzles. Another cool room with the shadows, though, the dynamic shadows and everything here. Looks, looks really nice with the, uh, the light up top. And the flashlight's um, dynamic as well. You'll see it'll start spraying shadows around. Okay, so we're coming up on the first save room of the game. Oh, and there's some more exposition. There's got to be a way to get into these rooms. Maybe some logs were left behind. We just found one of them. Um, oh, there's some ammo. The other thing, too, is that I know where all the ammo's hidden, so I'm going to come out of this with a lot, but, like, there's ammo right here. And unless you're looking for it, you're not going to find it. I, I tried to hide quite a few supplies in places where you may or may not know to look for them. Um, they're there if you look. It's kind of like Resident Evil 7 in that regard. There's, there's a lot of supplies in Resident Evil 7 that are just really well hidden. This game's no different. Um, unlocking this room, though, gets you some good goodies. Uh, you got the shotgun right here, which is, which is a pretty nice upgrade. Um... We're going to talk about the shotgun in a second, because it's it's changed from the previous title. So yeah, as you can see, on, on normal mode, you start really having a significant amount of supplies. This is really for folks who just want to play and enjoy the game and not throw their controller into the wall. Um, the uh, crafting system's still back. Um, uh, Painkiller's anointment still create a remedy full heal um, and you can uh, and I think we've got epic hack actually so a remedy in epic hack somehow gets us a first aid kit uh, first aid kits can cure both poison and they restore you to full health so they're they're pretty rare I think you can maybe make one or two of them in this chapter you'll need them quite a bit more on uh, higher difficulties Combining uh, ammo types is also still in. Um, and I believe uh, one of the features that was added very late, and I don't know if this feature made it in... I, I think it did make it into the new Nightmare on Xbox One. You can unload your, your guns, um, which was something that made a lot more sense to be able to do in, in the new Nightmare because you were kind of dropping and picking up items quite a bit. In this game, there are multiple pistols, so that feature will have a purpose one day. Um, I think you can only get the uh, the standard firearm though in um, in the story mode here, but the um, Lydia's pistol is in um, the battle mode. Uh, the the super piercing pistol does not appear in this chapter anywhere though. That that one's left for a later time. Um, I think that and um, the DMR don't appear in the story mode, but the DMR is in the battle mode somewhere. So, um, the shotgun, wow, and, and uh, the other thing worth noting is that when you pick up items, there's a slight randomization of the ammo that appears in them. Uh, rolling a 7 on the shotgun is really good for starting ammo. That's, I think, the one of the, I think that is the highest you can randomly get for the shotgun. Uh, so the big difference in this game with the shotgun is that the damage is toned down significantly, even the close-up headshots. Um, I think you're going to usually need at least two shells to even kill a normal zombie now. Because um, it was it was insane in the new Nightmare. You could just take out a crowd with a headshot. Um, I think the range was also reduced quite a bit. Alright. And it holds eight rounds. So uh, Description's the same, too. It's the, it's the same gun from the previous title. Alright. So we're going to save our game here. There's really very little danger of me dying, but I, I kind of have the whole game mapped out in my head. And we're gonna we're gonna press on. We're gonna um, we're gonna we're gonna dump the shotgun shells and forge on here. Okay, so we're heading down the stairs. Fade Reaper asks, never played this one any good. Well, this came out um, yesterday, and uh, I'm a little biased, but yeah, it's pretty good. Um, 
You can grab it off the Xbox One store. Just the game itself for Chapter One is uh, it's 4.49 on sale right now, 10% off. Um, and I released a new bundle too with this, which contains all of the games in the Outbreak series at a pretty hefty discount. And that bundle's even on sale right now for 20% off. So you can get the whole series right now for like 12 bucks. It's it's a pretty good deal. So this room there's there's quite a few quite a few folks in here. Let's just slide along the side, not aggro anybody just yet. Um, probably probably a good time to point out too the character models are higher quality in this game because I got the performance um, greatly improved. So you'll see even the even the models look tremendously better now compared to the new Nightmare. We're gonna uh, we're gonna try we're gonna try to do a pro move here and aggro them all and then get them with a shotgun. Do it. This was a mistake. Got this. And showing that you can still juke enemies like in Resident Evil. Uh, that's two. This dude's got quite a bit more health. Oh, come on. Yeah, pretty good. That's that is good ammo management. I think there's some supplies here. Oops. No, there's no supplies there. There's Epicac over here. Uh, but we're good. And yeah, on normal... Wow, that still took me down to warning. I think that was my first hit, too. Um, on hard and biohazard, you take way more damage per hit, too. So, you're, uh, you're, you're pretty tough on normal difficulty. I kind of regret not playing hard mode now. So, the game is not just the mansion area. You do go outside every once in a while. This game has one outdoor area. Probably will be going outdoors in subsequent chapters, too. Um, Fire Axe is another melee weapon. You can grab it right there. Um, and uh, the reptile enemies kind of own this place. I think I, I think I stashed some ammo. Oh, there's a floppy disk there. Wow. I think there was ammo stashed in here somewhere, too. I don't know where, though. And uh, Lydia sees a shed down there. Maybe there's some tools nearby. Just maybe. You can see there's some reptile enemies here. There's That one's really visible, but man, the other one is camouflaged. I'm going to try to do a pro move and slip right by him. Let's see if I can do it. Nope, I failed. Oh, he's going to kill me. We're grabbing the tools. Uh, they stole the acid attack. That door's locked. Oh, no. Things are bad. Oh, things are bad. We're gonna... Jeez. We're just gonna run for our lives. Uh, I, I really wanted the... really wanted the fire axe there, and then I realized that was gonna get me killed. Um, so we got the tools. And I think we, we remember where those go. Oh, and here we go. Some new enemies have showed up. These dudes are seekers. They're just going to come right for me. Oh, no. Um. Okay. Joke's on them. I wanted to be in caution health status. Uh, we're going to go heal. I have a feeling this game is going to be me talking a big a big game about how easy it is for me, and then I'm going to die. Okay, let's let's use our first aid kit. You've regained all health and removed all any status effects by using the first aid kit, and that got me an achievement, a moment of rest. Healed yourself. Yeah, I have to confess, too, this game is kind of an easy thousand achievement points. I, I may have needed to put a little bit more difficulty into those achievements, but I would say by the end of the, the first chapter in battle mode, you're probably going to be at 90% of the achievements unlocked, just through playing the game. Alright, let's reload the shotgun. And uh, let's ditch the ammo, we don't need to carry it. Uh... Ditch the handgun rounds, too. We'll come back for those. Uh, Fate Reaper says, I like the gun effects. Thank you, Fate Reaper. I like them, too. There's actually quite a bit going on when you fire the gun. Um, there's, um, when you fire, there's a muzzle flash that you can see comes that comes out, but there's also an extra effect that adds kind of like a 
expanding ball around the muzzle flash to really kind of make it seem a little bit more animated. Um, and then shooting walls, it throws off some sparks, and I think this mode still has the smoke turned on. I may need to turn it on in a, in a new patch, though, if it's not on. So we got to backtrack here. We've got, um, oh, jeez, Hunter. Or not Hunter, Reptile Enemy. This game does not have Hunters. Uh, these dudes get, get brutal. He went flying. We got him. Well, the later episodes have achievements, too. I'm pretty sure I can add achievements with DLC, because the next chapters are going to be paid DLC. Um, so I'm not going to promise it, but I, I think it, it's a possibility. Okay, that, that dude surprised me. I kind of forgot he was there. On a, a Nightmare difficulty, I'd be dead. This, um... I think I was I think I was very clever here with the camera placement. Um, there is an enemy I think directly behind Lydia that you can't see right now, and I think and I tried to do it so that you would kind of not anticipate the enemy. And I'm going to take a step back and let's see if we see him. Now he must ease further around the corner. Yeah. So you can see there he is. Well, That's kind of a cool angle. Let's get him. You can see that that small ball uh, expanding at the end of the gun, though. When you fire that, it just adds a little bit of animation to the firing. I wonder why I didn't bring the handgun ammo. Uh, this dude down here, as long as you don't need to go back that way, he's pretty optional. So I think you can just kind of slide in here. Rock, open the door with the tools. Let's get him. Oh, jeez. That's a poison enemy. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's a cheap shot right there. I'm not going to lie. That was That's meant to catch you off guard and get you poisoned. But luckily, me and the shotgun were ready. Um, this enemy's health, though, was intentionally very low. Because it's a, it's a total gotcha. Uh, floppy disk's everywhere, man, but I'm not saving my game. I'm going to leave it. A little bit more story exposition here. I have a staff. Um... Oh, you can see the keys on the table here. Ah, the golden key in the shape of a heart. And our good buddy, I think you can't see it from, from this camera angle, can you? Oh, you, you can see it in the left side here. But yeah, the, the assault rifle's in this room, too. Uh, I went out of my way to tone down the assault rifle's damage and knockback in this game, and it's still just an absolute beast, so I failed. A couple handgun bullets, too. Nice. All right, <laughs> there he is, just just sitting there. He just needs a friend. We're just gonna back away very slowly and do a quick turn. I got the ammo there, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the 180 degree turns in this that we all know and love. I get the. I don't. I don't think I need those floppy disks. Another change, too, that I, I did is that when you kill an enemy, the bodies don't disappear until you leave the room. They'll, they'll just stick around. Because it's not too bad of a performance hit, uh, honestly. Because there's only ever maybe four or five enemies tops in a room. Alright. So we got our heart key. I'm flying through this game. Oh, uh, Crimson Heads. Yeah, I wonder if... If a gameplay trope like that might come up in a, in a one of our ch one of the upcoming chapters. Um, okay, so we've got we found a bathroom. I, I I love this. This is a bathroom with two doors, but it's obviously meant to be a solo bathroom. It's just so strangely placed. But that's uh, that's that's quality architecture. So in this room, when you go to this door, you're gonna be like, oh, I'm just gonna walk out of here. But you can't. There's a combination. Our good friend, the uh, the book over here, will reveal the secrets. Uh, for each patient, you are expected to confirm the following every four hours. Confirm a movement in the in the latrine, perform a shower or sponge bath, clean teeth and ears using the sink. Now, it's almost as if these are intentional hints. So we're going to see latrine, bath, sink. 
Well, let's go over to the toilet. There's a four. Let's go over to the bath. There's a two, four, two. And my good friend the sink. Four two six. So I wonder if that um I wonder if that's the code. No inspectable I, I did yeah, that's just that. Here, no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, that hit me. I think it hit me. Let's let's get him with the assault rifle. Yeah. Another floppy disk. Eh, I'll take it. Coming up on a save room. I think there's ammo here too. There's ointment. Oh, big big money. Oh jeez, two enemies. Uh, let's get him. And shotgun. Wow. <laughs> he went flying. That is a nice ragdoll effect. And that earned me an achievement. Hold the line. I've defeated 20 threats. I did it all by myself. Let's grab that ammo. Grab the pistol. Alright. Ah, oh, there's more epic hack there. Um, and that is an enemy. Seven assault rifle rounds. Let's do it. Oh, he is moving. He's booking it. Oh no, I'm out of ammo. Oh no. Oh. That uh, took me down to took me down to warning. Yeah, Speedy saying doing well. Uri, keep it up. And yeah, I I'm really making normal mode look easy. I'll tell you. I like that it's I like that it's become a life or death struggle for me. Wait until I do my hard mode stream. That'll be that'll be that'll be great. <laughs> I'm dying the first room. Not enough inventory to get the shotgun shells. We do want those. Uh, this is a code for a later room too. Nine nine five five one one. I also made sure to have nice little save room jingles, so you so you know that you're safe. You you feel very safe. Let's uh, let's get rid of the floppy disk. Ammo's good. Let's go get the shotgun shells quick. What's this door. I do regret not doing hard mode though. I, I I'm flying through this. Although, wow, we don't—we do not have a ton of shotgun shells, and we're out of assault rifle rounds too. This is this is coming down to the pistol really quick. Let's burn some painkillers. Took up the fine. Floppy disk. Ammo. What else is in here? We got painkillers. Any ammo? Also, there's some dead bodies here. For this angle, it's terrifying. Ah, grenade rounds. Explosive shells designed for grenade launchers. The resulting explosions provide excellent crowd control. Some ammo. Nice. Ah, uh, we were equipped. And this is this is just easy listening. I love it. Okay, we're gonna save here. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. We're gonna this stream's at about an hour right now. We're gonna kind of call it here, um, and we'll we'll pick up next time. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a a brief introduction to the first chapter. You can see now, continue game actually is lit up, uh, which will work if we <laughs> when we need it next time. Um, and yeah, and I think we're gonna aim for four chapters. They're going to come slow. You know, it's going to be 2018, 2019, somewhere in that range. I, I don't have a ton of time to generate content for this, so it's kind of a couple hours here or there every week. Um, 
so it, it'll they'll they'll be coming. It's just going to be slow. Um, base game is uh, five bucks. It's on sale for four forty nine right now uh, through the launch period. And there's a bundle with all of the games in the series out in Outbreak the Nightmare Collection, um, uh, which is fourteen ninety nine, and it's on sale for eleven ninety nine uh, for um, I think until May eighteenth. I want to say. Um, and I, if you enjoy survival horror, I encourage you to check out the other games. The original Outbreak is a 2D overhead survival horror adventure. Outbreak the New Nightmare is, it plays similarly to this, but it's a little, um, it's a little less of a focused experience. There's, there's a lot of content in it, um, but the polish of the content does range a little bit as you kind of go through the game. But there's, there's some fun in there, and I, I highly recommend the blackout scenario in that game. It's, it's really, uh, just a classic survival horror level, um. So yeah, so thanks everybody for watching. I'm going to toss this up. This will be up on Video On Demand. We'll, we'll do a next stream. I'll, I'll at least finish the game, and then maybe we'll do battle mode on like hard mode or something and see if I can actually complete a run on that. And uh, maybe maybe we'll do a biohazard run through the, through the campaign. That, that would be, it'd be interesting to see if I can make it through one piece. Um, so thanks everybody for watching, and um, we'll pick it up here next time. See you later.